After six years of using Unity, six years of teaching Unity, three years of making content for Unity, and two years of being sponsored by them, I've decided to switch engines. Unity recently decided to shake up the game industry by introducing a new pricing model that charges per installation of a game, which I've never seen done before. But that isn't the main problem, which I'll explain later in the video. So this fee is in addition to their subscription costs, where they charge a certain amount per month per person on your team. Being on a certain tier may grant you less fees and more perks, such as removing the infamous Made with Unity splash screen, which a lot of indies and game developers do not like having for a good reason. Now, these fees only start to apply if you have over 200k in gross revenue and over 200k lifetime installs. The personal tier has no subscription costs, but charges 20 cents per installation, which can be a very hard metric to measure, as I'll discuss. The fee also changes based on where you are located, so they have an emerging country rate, which is different from the standard rate. This policy has so many issues, super vague, and has so many unknowns. First of all, how are these installs actually being tracked? Well, according to Unity, they'll be using their proprietary software to track installations, where developers will just have to trust them on their word. This is really problematic, obviously, for the lack of transparency, the privacy concerns of having this extra tracking on your application, and also the piracy concerns. Someone can write a bot to install your game thousands of times. Someone can reinstall their operating system, and that would maybe count as a new installation. There may be a lot of ways to get around this, and we're not exactly sure how Unity plans on addressing these concerns. Last year, they acquired Iron Source for $4.4 billion, which is a way for in-app monetization, and this was a very controversial merger. The caveat is if you use their system of ads called Level Play, you can actually be exempt from a lot of the fees that Unity is proposing, up to 80 to 100%. To me, it seems like Unity wants to force developers to use their ad system so they can take over their competitor, AppLovin. Now, I can't say for certain, but I'm pretty sure their angle is to get as much control as possible over the monetization so that they can get a bigger cut. Now, regarding the installations, there's a lot of questions on how this will be handled, especially what about refunds? What about on separate devices? What about Game Pass? Well, they previously said that installations would count per device. So let's say the same player has the game on Steam and on PlayStation, it would cost the developer 40 cents, 20 cents per each installation if the player installed it on both systems. For me, it's a little absurd that the developer will have to pay twice for the same player, a flat fee. There are some other issues with this. First, it isn't really scalable. Let's take Unreal for example. They charge a 5% royalty after you've reached a million dollars in revenue, which is pretty fair for a lot of studios and indie developers. It also scales with how much revenue you make, and it's predictable. However, Unity's model isn't really clear. You have the seats, the subscription you have to pay for, you have the flat fee you have to pay for, the fact that you have to trust Unity in their judgment of how many installations your game has, and this can create a bookkeeping nightmare for indie studios that are just trying to keep afloat. Now let's do some math. Let's say you have a game that costs $1 that meets the fee requirements. Steam takes 30%, so now you have 70 cents. Now let's say you're on the Unity personal plan and then Unity takes another 20 cents. So you've gained around 50 cents for your $1 game, so half of profit. Now let's say your game is on sale for 80% during Steam summer sale, so it's only 20 cents. Now Steam takes a 30% fee, so you're down to 14 cents, and now Unity wants a 20% flat fee. So you're negative six cents. Do you see the problem here? <laughs> Essentially, Unity is telling us that we either can't make our games too cheap, or if we're making a free game that we have some in-app purchases or DLC to cover our costs and make revenue, then we'll have to make sure that that can cover the costs of all the installations of everyone else. It's literally insane to me that this can bankrupt a studio if they don't have the appropriate revenue model in place. The fact that it can go net negative and there's no top of how much fees that they can take given your gross revenue is very alarming. However, there are some games that are exempt from the fee. Seems suspicious? They've also quietly removed their plus subscription tier, which a lot of studios and game developers had, mostly to remove the splash screen 
and now they'll be forced to have the pro subscription which is much more expensive if they just want that splash screen removed another very suspicious thing for me was that you now need internet access to use unity they'll let you use the engine for around two to three days without internet access but after that, you'll need to log in to continue to use the engine. I don't really understand why I need to be connected to the internet to use an offline application, but perhaps they want to monitor devs more closely and also make sure they're adhering to the rules. They also sneakily removed their previous terms of service, which stated we think you should be able to stick to the terms of services per version you are using without change. And they removed it and changed it after someone noticed to make it seem like they can change the terms of service whenever they want. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. That will be up for the lawyers to decide. And the worst part of it, well, I don't know if it's worse. Everything, <laughs> everything's just, <laughs> this applies to all games made with Unity starting on January 1st, 2024. So all prior games made with Unity. I'm not quite sure how they'll be enforcing this, but the fact that they can retroactively apply a fee to games that have already been made is very concerning to me. And they can change this at literally any time if they can change it now. So developers who published game years ago now have to worry about this fee that they may not have had into account when they made the game and may have not had the right monetization strategy in place. And perhaps it can even charge them an absurd amount of money if they don't take good practice. So I'm expecting a lot of lawsuits in the coming months, especially from big studios such as Sony, PlayStation, Marvel, who have games or host games that are made in Unity and this directly affects them. And when Unity published this news, obviously the internet went wild. And two days later, they came out with a clarification that people were waiting for, which basically told us to kind of suck it up in a way and that only 90% of us would be affected, which isn't really true. Really, even gamers are going to be affected by this. How will games have to adapt to meet this new fee? How will existing games have to change their strategy to meet this new fee? It also left us with many questions as how this data will be tracked and what about refunds? It was just a vague response to all of our uncertainties and I think they could have definitely handled it better. They also seem to go back on what they said previously that reinstalls would count, the new clarification says it wouldn't count. So for me, I'm seeing this big company, you know, in charge of all these games and they're not even sure what they're putting out on their press releases, they're changing their mind in two days, it seemed very rushed to me. It seemed like I read on Twitter the employees themselves were against this and was telling Unity, you shouldn't do this. Even with the insiders, they asked for our feedback and we were like, you probably shouldn't do this. And while they ignored everything, the employees and we had to say, and that's not a very good sign for me for a game company. So already hundreds of studios and developers are cutting ties with Unity and choosing to use another engine for their next game, which is really such a shame because they've built their foundation on this engine. So they'll have to basically retrain their whole team to learn a new engine because of this breach of trust. And developers that I know personally spent years making tools and assets for these engines are really discouraged because basically they also have to start from zero and learn something else from scratch to make money to live and pay their rent. A lot of people on Twitter are saying that we're overreacting, that it's not actually a big fee. And true, perhaps in comparison with Unreal, if you meet the certain requirements, you'll probably pay a much less fee directly compared to Unreal. And so the money isn't really our issue. The issue is that they can just push these changes out of nowhere with little to no communication. It's very vague. It seems like they don't really care about the indie developers that they're affecting. They can just apply this retroactively to all prior games made with Unity, which means that they can change it again. So essentially they've breached our trust. Like we can no longer trust Unity as a company with our future games because we don't know if they're going to decide to change it one day. I would gladly pay a royalty fee or some sort of maybe subscription, for example, to use Unity if I were making my game in it. You know, these tools take a lot of money and the company also needs to flourish. But if they had just followed Unreal's example with a simple pricing plan, a royalty fee that's predictable, even if we pay more up front, it would just remove all the bookkeeping and logistical nightmare that indie developers will have with this flat fee. 
maybe in a year they'll decide to raise the prices or maybe even switch the pricing model again you know at this point we don't know it's been very vague and the way unity is reacting is not how a company should act personally and that's what happens when a company goes public and now starts to depend on its stockholders for its success and these stockholders most likely than not do not know anything about making a game or a game engine they just want to see profits and so what the game engine will do is try to chase these profits in expense of the developers and over time it will just lead to something like this and that's why i think engines such as godot and unreal are really good options in our case if people are looking to switch especially because godot is free and open source so if anything ever happens you know they can just fork it and make a new version the project will always continue it grows also with community contributions and then unreal engine isn't really littered with pr scandals so much as unity they have experience building games which is a big thing unity really lacked you know one solid title for unreal it's fortnite they bring in millions and millions of revenue every year and all of the work they do in fortnite all of the features they develop for it gets trickled down to its developers in unreal engine and that's why it's such a solid product with a lot of solid offerings also with unreal you have a eula that states that it won't change in the version you're using so once you publish a game you know that that's the license you have and it won't be able to change in the future so going forwards my friendship with unity has unfortunately ended i was going to go to the unite event in amsterdam in november so i've canceled that i also had a really cool sponsorship in place with them and i won't be doing that which is kind of a bummer especially because you know i love unity i've been using them for a long time they've been my biggest sponsor over the last two years so it is quite a revenue hit for me so i'll have to find other things to supplement my revenue but it can also be a good sign for me basically telling me to diversify and learn new things and also build up more income sources to be more stable in the future i also completely understand the people who will keep making games on it it's not like one or the other this isn't a battle you know we're all in this together so no need to be like oh i don't know you know just do whatever feels right for you i'm gonna be learning godot and unreal to not put all of my eggs in one basket like i did for unity godot is great for 2d they have a lot of great 2d features maybe even more built in than unity does and then unreal is great for 3d they have a lot of nice offerings and a lot of built-in assets that we can use they also have a lot of starter projects and projects in general which is something i felt that unity lacked was a good project a good starter project or some examples to get started that were included with the engine i'm not saying they're both perfect they both have their issues and problems exactly like unity but going forward, this is my best bet as I continue to make content and in the future make a Steam release game. I also want to say that the Unity employees, the Unity folks are actually super, super amazing. Like the people hating on them, they have no reason to hate on them. They're just as us. They love game developers. They love indie developers. They're the ones that have been making the engine flourish. They really made me feel as an insider appreciated and that my thoughts really mattered and i'm truly grateful for everything they've done they've paid me the highest sponsorships out of all my sponsors they've invited me to events flown me around the world and so i'm really grateful for unity and all of the employees so i'm very grateful for unity for the opportunities it gave me but i'm also grateful that i have the chance and the ability to adapt and learn new engines and go with my own flow thank you to all my patrons and all my supporters and I guess my content will be changing a little bit in the times to come. Hasta la próxima.